Yo guys, so welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today it's a lovely sunny day and we're up riding at uh, Kunk Kunk. And in this video, I thought it'd be cool to break down and not just do like GoPro runs on the track, but I know the guys have been doing a lot of digging on the track. So there's a lot of new features, a lot of new things to learn. So I thought it'd be cool to jump in and show you like how to progress on a trail. So if there's new features and you wanna learn how to improve your confidence, this is gonna be a cool video for you. So stick around and we'll jump in for the first run. <laughs> Okay, so the first run on a trail, I usually like to scope out the track we're riding. So first run, I would always just go and do a warm-up lap, a scoping lap, just to see what features on the track, what the track is riding like, the conditions, if it's wet, dry, and just try and get a feel for how the track is riding. So we'll jump in, I'm gonna follow Amanda down. Hey. <laughs> Ooh, can't view. Wow, the boys have been putting some work in. So this is one of the new features the lads have been digging. It's basically just a cheese wedge fly off and you can land wherever you want. It's good to stop at these things though, just to get a feel of what things look like. Looks like you're gonna be coming into that with some speed. Like you can come into that as fast as you want and go as far as you want. So it's fairly safe, but it's just good to know like that's actually, a new, new feature. Man, a really... John pushed me to do it the other day. <laughs> and I was like, James, come on up. And I was like, well, well, I don't know. And I just trailed him in and launched it and loved it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, he's getting the marking tape out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Smashed it. Look at that. He's got a half a butt, half a wheel's length on him. Whoa. Okay, so that was run number one. We took it very easy just to figure out what the track was like. Didn't really go too fast. It just really got a feel for what the track was riding like, which is a kind of a common mistake I see a lot of people making. Almost maybe it's out of excitement. You just want to get going, you want to speed up, and especially when you're riding with mates, everyone almost feeds off each other. So if one person starts going faster, everybody else seems to think that they have to go even faster, which I've had crashes in the past from when I've done that. And because I've just not been warmed up and ready and I don't know the trail as well as maybe some of the other people do. So that was the first one. I usually use that as like a scoping lap. Now we're going to go back up and we're going to try to pick some more focus points on the track and pick up a bit of speed. Thank you. Yeah. Now we know roughly where the track goes. God, my hair looks horrendous. I need a haircut. We're going to pick out two, potentially three features to focus on that are like key features on the track. So that's what I would do on like a second run, if you like. If there's anything you don't feel confident with or you need to practice more, just stop at those two key features and practice them one, two, three times. I won't go crazy on it because then you will just lose energy and you'll probably be die if you did that in the heat here it's so hot but yeah we'll drop into the trail and we'll go find those features a little bit faster now start trying to jump a few things i know i'm confident with we've actually ridden this track before and here's the first little feature so it doesn't look like much but there's a a fly off you come out of a corner and then there's a little pre-hop jump thing and then you can go as far as or as short as you want. It's pretty loose today. Gotta be careful, it's so loose. Oh. The ground is so dry. Go up high here. Oh man. A little bit ski whiff then. I think I could do with putting a little bit more pressure on my tires. When I landed, I felt the tires roll a little bit. Not ideal. Also trying to look at line choice as well, so if you want to go faster I'm always trying to look for where the faster and smoother lines are Nice That's a good line Nice Keep those wheels rolling, you'll be fine 
So that was the second run down. Built up a little bit more confidence. Amanda tried some more of the, the drops and jumps on the track, which is really cool. One thing I did notice there, I don't know if you saw or heard, I went off one of the jumps at a fairly high speed. And as I landed, my rear tire rolled. So what that basically means is the tire is pretty much not staying as sturdy as it should be. So when I landed, it almost like squirmed and I had to almost correct my body weight or body position to get back in line and back in control. So I'm gonna put a little bit more air in my rear tire and just test that out and see if that was that solves the issue. Another common mistake I see people making if they want to progress on a trail, say I'll get faster on a trail and there's something wrong with their bike or their bike's not feeling amazing, they'll tweak like a bunch of different settings at once. And then if you do that, you've no idea what change has made the improvement or if there's any improvement at all. A little tip where you're adjusting suspension or bike setup, only adjust one thing at a time and then go and retest it. I'm going to put a little bit more pressure in your forks. So what you're saying, we're diving? Yeah. Let's just see what PSI are on here and let's see what the recommendation is. So we've only got 40 PSI in here, which is really, really low. I think that's probably going to solve the issue of your forks diving without adjusting any of these settings because the fork is literally just going through the travel because it's not got enough pressure. How much do you weigh? Uh, like 79 kilograms. It recommends between 150 and 180 PSI. Amanda had 40 PSI in her fox. That's probably the issue. It's probably just seeped out over time. Okay. Try that on the next run. What a view. I've just snapped my chain after saying that I do, I haven't done very much maintenance on my bike for the past week or so. Oh dear. Okay, so we've just snapped our chain. That sounds pretty bad, but we have a chain tool to fix it. I'm going to choose not to fix it though, because there's a really cool important lesson here if you're wanting to learn how to progress and get faster on a trail, because if you look into the science, again, I'm not a scientist or an engineer or anything like that, but it's been proven over and over again in mountain biking that chainless bikes perform better. And that's a blanket statement. I know it could be rider skill and things like that, but when you don't have a chain, there isn't as much chain suck, chain feedback, and your suspension is freed up to work as it should. Again, I don't know the terminology behind everything, but that's generally the gist of it. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna do a chainless run, and we're gonna put everything together, what we've learned in the last two runs, and see if we can start carrying some more speed down the trail and over the features. Okay, so we don't have a chain on now. Can't pedal, well I can. <laughs> you can spin my cranks. Let's just see how the suspension reacts down this trail this time. You can feel the bike wanting to, you can feel the bike wanting to go a little bit faster. Whoa, Christ. Okay, so we've stopped about 30 seconds into the track because Amanda wanted to point out something and it's kind of important actually. So we have this feature here. This is called the Lombok Express. All the guys have named the feature summer track after something. And it's kind of hilarious. This is a real funny one because you come and you can see there behind the grass, there is a corner. And then here, right here, you can see it on the camera, there's like a fade away and then it goes right as well. So ideally you'd like to set up and jump off the jump straight. But here, if you're going for speed, you have to literally cut the corner and then move your body weight slightly different so you are ready and straight to go off the jump because the last thing you want is to take off off the jump in like a really funny position that you're you're basically just going to be sliding and then you've got no control in the air so let's go again it's amazing we're having a bit of air in your suspension does i felt so uncomfortable when we first rode down this track and i thought oh maybe it's me or maybe i'm really tense not ridden for a while and then we checked my suspension because it was diving a bit and then Alex put a bit more pressure in it because it was at 40 and it needs to be about 120. 150. 150 even. I just went off that jump and oh my god I just felt so much like better. Over. That's not where I meant. No I stubbed my toe. Yeah so that's not the jump. Fuck that really hurt. Going on a ride so that if you do hurt yourself your front toenail bangs the top of your toe like proper like gone stubbed it inwards shake it off do another jump
Need a Pokari sweat. How was that? Good? Yeah, really good. Really good. Okay, so that was run number three. It's very hot today, so you've got to be careful as well. My body feels fine now, but I, I know I'm starting to get to that level where I'm overreaching and overheating. So this is probably a good time to start thinking about calling it a day. One thing I used to do when I raced downhill was used to do way too much. I used to do way too much in practice and almost like try and get my money's worth, if that makes sense, and just do as many runs as possible. But that gets to a point where you reach maybe your maximum speed and then you just keep going and then runs just like deteriorate from there. How is now I have the intuition to like work up my speed, get my confidence up on a trail to figure out where I'm going. I'm pretty strong on saying, right, no, that's it. I'm going to call it now. I'm going to go and rest because I've had some big injuries before when I've been tired, I've not been focused, I've not been on the ball and it's the worst doing that. So don't do that. Okay, so we're on run number four now. Feel confident on where the track is going, how the track's riding, the conditions. What we're going to do in this run, I'm going to do a full run down and I'm going to talk you down it. So talk you down kind of how I've improved different sections and try and do some like active commentary to show you what I would do in certain parts of the track. It's like 30, probably close to 35 degrees today. It's just gone midday. It's very hot and hydration is definitely key when you're riding temperatures like this. So another quick tip, make sure you're hydrated and get some electrolytes in you or something. Comment below if you've seen a more beautiful place to ride. Trail starts, trail finishes the beach. Let's do a running start. Ugh. Wow, that was so not dramatic. Okay, very loose trail, very dry. Hard to see out the corners because there's a lot of high grass. Little jump coming up now. Ooh. Very easy to blow these turns out. I don't even want to go too far off that. I feel like I'm sliding everywhere. These huge burns the guys have built. Into this off camera section. Okay, let's see how good the chain, well, no chain carries me up here. Look at that. Oh, one thing I do notice though, having no chance to pedal is the cramp in my calves. Oh into a jump, try and squash that and get ready for the next steeper bit of trail. Very loose. Oh. Oh. Not much support on that exit. Oh. Not gonna kill a bird. Okay, carrying speed good. Into an off camber right. Carry speed out, mini jump. And pump this turn. And then there's a flat section which you would pedal this big turn high up there and try and hop the back end round. Literally, I'm just trying to stay off the brakes as well through this off camber or traversy bit, should I say, just to carry more speed. I'm trying to use the berms to keep me going. Oh, okay, so there's a new bit of trail down here now. The guys have worked really hard on. Oh, God, if you got the brakes off down here, you'd be. Flying. Oh, find the wrong bit of trail there. Eh? Could have taken that line a little bit better. Then we go off the new fly off. Speed tuck. Really cool bit of track this. Go get your braking right so you don't miss that left. And then prepare for the sticky left bit. So you'll see. My line choice in a second will change a little bit just because it gets very loose down here. Ooh. Okay, cut up high, then we're going to cut across the track. Oh, shit! I'm nearly washed out. This is just trying to keep the weight over the front wheel. Then slipping. Oh. Ah. Damn. Nearly ran my front wheel over that. <laughs> then we go into someone's garden. <laughs> yes. Oh, so fun, so damn fun. 
So that was pretty much a full run. That's what I would like to do if I was doing like a training ride for an EWS. I'd like pick one trail, maybe just work up my skills on certain parts of the track to the point where I can do a fast full run where I'm riding at about 80, 90%, not 100%, just back down a little bit from that. So just quickly run through those tips again. First one, use your first run as a scoping lap, check the trail out check the features out, check the track conditions out. Second run, increase the pace a little bit to see if there are any features that you need to work on on the trail. You don't need to do them that run, but just know that they are there. Run number three, I think that was on my chain snap. Work on those features if you have time. So like push back up, practice them, session them. So you build up confidence on the features that are in your head, if that makes sense. And then the final run for me, I like just doing a full run and trying to link everything together nice and smooth and consistent. So hope you guys found those tips helpful and follow them. Comment below which one resonates with you most and look forward to seeing you on the trail.